Frid och shalom och välkomna till morgonkaféet. Det var härligt att ta en kopp kaffe här på morgon. Och sätta sig ner och studera vad som händer just nu. Det är ju både spännande och fasansfulla tider vi är inne i. Ni kan följa oss på Telegram. Ni kan följa oss på vår hemsida med ständiga uppdateringar. Här följer nu två videor sen som tar upp läget. Den ena det har ju blivit väldigt respons på de här kartorna. Så vi lägger ut så folk är med och ser hur kriget utvecklas. Hur Israel arrangerar sina trupper och vad som har hänt. Den andra videon sen den tar upp problematiken där nere i Mellanöstern. Det finns ju även kristna araber också som mår väldigt dåligt i det här läget också. Ja, jag får säga det ju mer man studerar det här där nere, ju mer invecklat blir det faktiskt med alla möjliga konstiga islamistiska terrororganisationer som härjar. Men vi ska komma ihåg att evangeliet går ut även till den arabiska världen. Senaste nyheterna här är ju då att IDF har attackerat och precisionsbombat över 320 mål över hela Gazarensan under de 24 senaste timmarna. Och Amir skriver på sin hemsida precis nu här att en markinvasion är oundviklig. Men de två största frågorna man har just nu då är ett. Ska vi vänta och krossa från luften? Så länge så att pansar- och infanteristyrkorna blir mindre hotade sedan. Och sen två. Ska vi göra likadant mot Hisbollah i förebyggande syfte innan vi går in i Gaza? Ja, hur man ska handla här det är ju får vi ju svaret på inom de närmsta dagarna. Amir är ju själv militär och har eh, ja, så att säga uppgifter från IDF. Troligen kan han ju inte berätta några hemligheter men det han får godkänt släpper han ut och de uppgifterna litar vi på mer än på våra svenska tidningar i alla fall. Det finns en del andra tidningar som är hyfsade då men vi får som sagt vi får pröva allting även det som kommer ut här för att det pågår ett mediakrig. Nu kommer de här videorna. Håll till godo så hörs vi under dagen på Telegram och på vår hemsida. Gud välsigna er alla. Så ber vi för Israel givetvis och för hela situationen där nere. Amen. Regions were obliterated one after another. Especially in Syria. Terrorists and weapons were being gathered against Israel. But Israel disrupted the entire plan in one fell swoop. Attempts were made to raid by terrorists from Lebanon and Gaza today. However, Israeli soldiers managed to thwart them with clever moves. Many significant events occurred today. So, if you're ready, let's quickly examine today's news through maps and real images. The first news of the day is from Syria. Israel achieved a significant success by disrupting the grand plan in one go. Normally, groups supported by Iran, such as Hezbollah, have increased their attacks. They are attacking Israel by uniting through Lebanon and Syria. They said they would conduct raids in the coming days and move towards military posts. They need support in terms of weapons and supplies for this. Iran and similar countries do not prefer to use land routes to quickly deliver this aid to the region because land routes within Syria are monitored by countries like the United States and Turkey. Especially when Turkey controls the roads in northern Syria, the United States controls the roads in the east. So, it is very challenging for countries like Iran to deliver supplies to the groups they support via land routes. They attempted to solve this problem by air, and they would use the airports close to the west of Syria. Israel learned this information and launched a swift raid. Normally, the initial attack was made about a week ago. The airports in Damascus and Aleppo in Syria were neutralized by a rapid raid by Israeli F-35S. Today, another attack was added to these strikes. Again, Israeli F-35S probably entered the region and approached the airports. We say F-35 because advanced Russian air defense systems are present in Syria. Since the radars of these systems are also advanced, the only aircraft that can enter and exit the region without being detected is Israel's F-35S. The aircraft entered Syria and approached two airports, dropping their bombs from a certain distance. They should avoid getting closer because there are air defense systems at the airports. In today's attack, the bombs completely destroyed the runways of the two airports. Now, 
it is hardly possible to use them without complete repairs. Similar attacks were carried out about a week ago, but Syria was trying to repair these runways. Israel put the final point today to send a message not to repair them. Now aircraft cannot come to aid Western terrorist organizations. This also means a decrease in attacks from the Syria and Lebanon region. In a chain reaction, Israel has successfully prevented many attacks in one fell swoop. Our second report is from Gaza. Today, Hamas attempted a major raid. They haven't attempted such significant operations since the beginning of the conflict. The recent Israeli raids seem to have left them desperate. They tried to launch a direct attack by crossing the border today. They approached from the right side of the Khan Yunis region. There is a large wall here, and they chose to get close to the forested area on the left side of the road, because they had to cross over it. Normally, they advance after creating a hole in the wall by placing explosives. However, they didn't choose this method today to avoid making noise, because there was no explosion sound at the start of the conflict. They probably leaned a ladder against the wall and began cutting the barbed wire located meters above. Thanks to this silence, they quickly crossed behind the wall and used anti-tank missiles they had brought with them to hit an Israeli tank and bulldozer. These vehicles were inactive and in a closed position. In other words, they hit closed vehicles waiting in the corner. Afterwards, Israeli soldiers quickly responded. Since there was a massive wall behind them, the terrorists retreated after the conflict broke out, as they wouldn't be able to escape from the wall, which was meters high, if Israeli soldiers advanced towards them. This allowed Israel to thwart the major raid. While the attack is still fresh, Israeli drones and aircraft are now searching for these terrorists who crossed the border. They will locate and neutralize the terrorists. There is a high likelihood that they are hiding in houses close to the border. This way, the biggest terrorist attack in recent days did not achieve its full objective. Their goal was to advance towards the Israeli outpost in the Kisufim region. Israel's rapid counterattack prevented this objective. Now, for our third report from the Egypt border. Following the opening of the border crossing for aid trucks, Hamas terrorists immediately tried to seize this opportunity. Their goal was to become invisible by exploiting the movement in the area. They attempted to mix in with the areas where trucks were located at the border, and an explosion occurred. The exact purpose of this attack is not known, but they likely tried to create chaos in the region by attempting to use the tunnels located just west. These tunnels extend for kilometers towards Egypt. If there is any movement at the border crossing, it would divert all attention to that area, which would benefit Hamas. It would make it possible for them to smuggle tons of weapons and different materials through the tunnels. Today, we believe they used these tunnels very actively. Israel must have thought the same, because they targeted two points immediately behind the tunnel area. Intense activity was detected in the region, and tunnel locations must have been identified. Hamas opens the tunnels inside houses to avoid detection, and today, Israel rendered two more houses near the border inactive in this manner. So, Hamas has lost two more of its identified tunnels today. Finally, our fourth report is from the West Bank. The region continues to be volatile day by day. Terrorists are trying to create chaos by stirring up a camp in the region every day. Their target today was the central Nablus region. It is reported that a conflict has erupted in the area, and Israeli soldiers have taken control and managed to secure the region. Moving on to the upper region, things have become much more complicated. In Jenin City, Israel has launched a large-scale operation for counterterrorism. When they entered the city, they discovered that this city has a network of tunnels. Once again, a tunnel extending for kilometers, and they preferred not to enter it to avoid becoming a target. Some terrorists stay inside the tunnels to stay out of sight. Israeli soldiers relayed this information to their headquarters, and the building with the tunnel entrance was destroyed by aircraft. This way, the critical structure of the terrorists in Jenin City has been rendered ineffective. Now, for the final reports, we head to the Lebanon border. Following Israel's neutralization of the Syrian airports, the terrorists have initiated new actions. They attempted to strike Israeli territory from both the Syrian and Lebanese borders. Particularly in the Golan Heights, which is close to Syria, they fired rockets at the control points one after another or they attempted to fire missiles from the vicinity of Kiryat Shmona into Israeli territory. After relaying this information to their headquarters, 
Israeli warplanes targeted the locations where the attacks were taking place. Some terrorists were neutralized, and some chose to flee to avoid becoming targets for the aircraft. Additionally, as Hezbollah's attacks on Israel failed, they started experimenting with new tactics. They tried to create a significant chaos by setting fire to the forested area and shrubs in the region. Currently, the opposite side of the Blida region is engulfed in flames. Let's see what measures Israel will take against these fires. Lastly, it has been revealed that Hezbollah is using the village of Binchbeil as a base. They hide their weapons in the houses in the region and launch attacks on Israeli territory from there. They are especially present in some of the houses in the south. Therefore, Israel initiated a heavy airstrike on the identified storage facilities. It is reported that numerous terrorists were eliminated. Israel continues to protect its border in Lebanon in this manner. We'll see what events unfold in the coming days. And this is what we mean by moral equivalency. And, and can we draw that moral equivalency I mean, in Israel and Hamas really comparable? No, absolutely not comparable. Because if you think about the again, let, let's start with the fact that Israel's not at war with the Palestinians. Thank you so much. Israel, so Israel and the Palestinian people are not at war. No, and Israel and Israelis have for years been trying to have some kind of peace deal mm -hmm. with the Palestinians. They long to have peace with the Palestinians. The assumption that uh, Israel and, is, is at war with the Palestinians is, is an absolute lie. Israel is at war with Hamas, and they have to be. Why? Because Hamas basically is committed to murdering, to destroying, to annihilate, to annihilate Absolutely. the Jewish people and the Jewish state. There is no, you cannot have a peace process with somebody want, that wants to murder you. You can have a peace process with somebody who's willing to come to the negotiating table mm -hmm. and recognize, okay, you have a right to exist. Absolutely. And so Israel's war is not with the Palestinians. Israel's war... And I think that's a very, 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 very important distinction. So let's add to this. If we want to talk about, you know, this, this it's, it's almost a blasphemous, it's so a blasphemous and anti-Semitic to even suggest that Israel and Hamas are morally equivalent. Just this past week, last Saturday, Hamas basically crossed the border with thousands of terrorists. My, my cousin's kibbutz mm -hmm. was overrun, okay? The terrorists came, they did not care who they found, yeah. foreign workers included. Foreign yeah. workers, they, they, didn't, they didn't care. Oh, yeah. they, they came to one kibbutz, they, they, they came to the housing of, of uh, Thai um, agriculture workers. They found 25 of them. They just killed nine on the spot and then they took 16 to the Gaza Strip. People from Thailand. Had nothing to do nothing with nothing. Nothing to do with it. But what, what about babies? We saw pictures of babies lying in their cribs with bullet holes in their bodies. Whole yeah. families, little children taken captive. A Holocaust survivor who's senile that is in a video with a Hamas soldier putting his Kalachnikov on, his, on her lap and making the V victory sign, yeah. mocking her. Women being dragged into, into Gaza, okay, screaming from yeah. a dance party, screaming, brought, unclothed, yeah. raped, and executed. And the crazy thing about this is that Islam right? The Islamic extremism, they cover their women from head to toe. Yeah. From head to toe as if it's a, they're such a holy people, but they have no issue with stripping and degrading yeah. Israeli women, right. raping them, murdering them. I mean, and, and so... But, but let's take it beyond, beyond the personal. I, of course, I agree with everything you say, and I think it touches a deep emotional cord in, in each one of us. But if we're taking it to to maybe a little more, if I can put in those words, a philosophical slash theological level, why we were both so, why did it touch such a, a string in our hearts um, to try and equate Israel and Hamas to a husband-wife quarreling and refusing to make peace? Yeah, because I think the better analogy would be a wife who's being hunted by her ex-husband, Right. He's got a knife, he's got an axe, he's got a machine gun, and he's out looking for his ex-wife. 
and he's going to find her and he's going to kill her and he's going to kill the children, okay? There's no reconciliation here. And any pastor that is in that situation, if the pastor is armed, the pastor is going to get in between yeah. that wife and those children and he's going without any pings of conscience, he's going to take out the threat. Okay, that is the better analogy. Sure. There's no analogy to think about moral equivalency. That the, the letter, again, was to suggest that Israel and Hamas act the same. Okay, but here's the real big difference. Israel's not at war and does not want to annihilate the Palestinians. Right. Israel's at war with the Hamas. If we were going to try to come up with some sense of moral equivalency, we would say that the way that the only way that Israel could be morally uh, equal with Hamas, equivalent with Hamas, would be to drop a nuclear bomb. I'm sorry to say, on Gaza, just to get rid of them, to start bombing Gaza and not notify the residents that they have 24 hours to get out, so that they can clear those areas and those tunnels. Moral equivalency would be for the Israeli soldiers to slip in in the middle of the night to kidnap little children, to behead babies, to take Palestinian women into Tel Aviv, to rape them publicly, and then to murder them. Israel would never, it, it's unthinkable yeah. that Israel would ever do such a thing. There is no moral equivalency whatsoever. And I, I think as the, um, you know, the, in the first few days, we saw uh, very much of an international uh, shock and support towards uh, Israel and because of everything that has happened. But I think we're already seeing a complete change of that where Israel is again seeing as the uh, aggressor in the situation. And, um, you know, we had uh, just a couple of days ago, we had a prayer meeting with both Jewish and Arab pastors together. That was very special. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Listen, the Arab pastors in this country are in tears. Yeah. They're crying. They're weeping for the Jewish people. They, they came and they donated all sorts of humani mm. humanitarian aid, quickly gathered, came, distributed, want to help. Uh, the Arab believers here in this country are heartbroken, and they also see a threat to their existence because Hamas Absolutely. has no issue with putting to death Palestinian Christians, they Arab Christians, they're just as much an enemy oh, yeah. as of, the, of, the, of the Palestinian Christians. You know, another thing you talked about and you mentioned it, it's so interesting this, that, that the, the, the shift of support is, has quickly yeah. transferred, okay? And so you have all these groups on, on these college and university campuses and all these protests that this, there's, there's this pro-Palestinianism that basically fully endorses and believes in what Hamas is doing. But to be honest, that's not pro-Palestinianism. No. That is anti-Palestinianism. Why? And anti-Semitism. <laughs> Let's put both on the well, table. Well, for sure it's anti-Semitism. But what people don't even realize is that it's anti-Palestinianism mm -hmm. because people don't realize how, how much the Palestinians in Gaza have been held captive and suffered by this evil, horrible, satanic regime, a regime that puts to death anybody that would even consider faith in Jesus. They've yeah. shot pastors in the head. They murdered oh, yeah. pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, to, be pro <laughs> to, to love the Palestinians would be to long to see Hamas gone. Uh, and, and there's no question. I mean, they, they make it abundantly clear. And I think it's really important for people in the West to realize that Hamas makes it abundantly clear in its Arabic uh, propaganda that the Jews first and then the Christians. And in their view, anyone who's not a Muslim and lives you know, in the West is a Christian. And it's so important to understand that this, this notion of moral of equivalency will always result in hatred for being so cruel to the Palestinians, and nothing could be farther from the truth. Israel does not want innocents to die. Hamas wants all Jews to die. Israel doesn't want the innocents to die. They want to protect them. Mm -hmm. But they're in the middle of a war 
with an or, against an organization who will even use the Palestinians oh, yeah. as, as, as human, human shields. shields. Oh, no so, question. No yeah. question about it. So, w- what does it mean that Hamas uses the Palestinian people as human shields? What, what exactly is happening? So, Israel, um, obviously they don't want to indiscriminately bomb innocent civilians. And so, what they do is they they message every single person in the area they're about to bomb. And when I say about to bomb, they give them enough time to get out. And the reason that they bomb these places is because that underneath there, there's a whole network yeah. of there's terror. There's a whole city, yeah, there, Of the terror that's designed mm-hmm. to destroy Israel. And so, what ends up happening is that Hamas creates roadblocks so that the, the Gazans can't get out. And the reason that they put these blockades is because Hamas desires, it's to their interests, mm. that as many dead children, dead adult, dead people make it to the screens as possible because they want to use the, the deaths of, their, of the Gazans t- for their own propaganda to create more hatred for the people of Israel. And you think about these... In Israel, our army is is there to protect the innocents. Yeah, we're evacuating people from the danger zones. Our our, our soldiers put themselves in between yeah. the danger and our civilians. Hamas puts their civilians between themselves and the danger. So it's important that we address this because we really want Christians to understand the truth of what's happening here. That that the notion of you know both sideism, the notion of moral equivalency. It's anti-Semitic. Let's just say, lay it on the table. Anybody that makes that claim, he may not be anti-Semitic, but he's exposing anti-Semitic views. <laughs>